Namaste, everyone. So today we'd like to take a look at how your clothing affects your posture. And this one is for people in posture groups eight and nine, meaning you're basically chair bound. It's either very hard to get around or you're actually living in a mobile chair, right? So this is the second of the fixing your furniture videos. It might sound kind of strange, like, wait a minute, uh, how is clothing furniture? But from your body's point of view, actually it is, right? It's something that's a part of, you're using it every day, and it's something your body's got to work around. It doesn't really give you any other options. <laughs> so it definitely counts as furniture. Um, most of the people in this group, their first thought is that this video probably isn't very important for them. You know, how your clothing fits makes much, it seems to make much more of a difference if you can move around more, right? I mean, it just stands to reason. It seems like common sense, doesn't it? It's actually not true, though. You've actually got more clothing issues than regular people do, <laughs> unfortunately, right? But that's good news because this is one of the invisible somethings that you would never have guessed in a million years was actually making a big difference in how you feel. Like if you're mostly sitting down all the time, if you're in a fair bit of pain a lot of the time, your body has become so desensitized to being able to tell what good posture is, something subtle like that, that you're doing things that are really, 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 really bad for your posture and you just have no idea. You know, you just can't feel nothing. <laughs> so I, it's kind of funny, right? I mean, I'm the one who can get up and walk around here. You're the one stuck in the chair. But I'm going to try to, you know, talk to you just like you're an alien, right? Because it is kind of like that. Like, I'm going to be talking about the things that your body is experiencing when you're sitting in that chair. So um, let's take a stab at this. What do we want to do? What's, what's, uh, what's going on here with our clothing? Well, the first thing, of course, is your shirt, right? Um, for most people, it's not an issue, you know, it hangs off of your shoulders. So it doesn't really matter whether it's more form fitting like this, or it's nice and loose. It's never really going to get in the way of you moving. It's just not an issue, but for you it is. Let me show you what I mean. If I put on just a regular oversized t-shirt, very popular, right? Okay. Pull out the chair. Of course, this isn't really like a mobile chair, but it has a lot in common with it. The mobile chairs uh, definitely have good side pieces like this. They accommodate a wide range of shapes. They're very straightforward. Most of them do give some space for your tail. Okay, so, oh yeah, here, all right, so start standing. All right, so if I sit down, what happens? I sit on my shirt, right? I mean, that I, I can actually feel it. I can actually feel this pulling down on my shoulders just by sitting down. Now, if you are maybe a little more mobile, maybe you've noticed this, you know, you make sure that when you sit down, you lift your shirt and you lift your pants so that you can, you can bend and move and then it's not an issue, right? And that definitely works. You know, if you really like loose clothing um, and you spend most of your time sitting, it's not hard to just make sure you lift your shirt when you sit down but it is very important that you lift your shirt because what happens if you don't if i just sit down and you know if, if people are sitting around most of the time for this video i gotta become more of a slouch here right nobody who spends most of their time sitting is not a slouch okay i mean you just sitting is actually the most stressful position for the human body to be in so by definition, you know, you're, you're, you're in a really, really, really ultra stressful position all the time. You would never guess it. You've gotten used to it. It's like, well, I hurt less when I don't try to move around. What are you talking about? Right. But, um, in terms of silent body stress, yeah, this is whopping. Okay. So you're always going to be slouched when you sit, you know, um, now maybe if you don't move around very much, you know, I mean, you can reach around a little bit. It's not like you can't move just because you're sitting on your shirt. It's pulling on me every single direction. It's pulling on my shoulders and it's encouraging me to slouch down more and more. Why? Because the back of my shirt is stuck. Okay. I can move a lot farther now very easily. My shirt is never going to get in my way. So get your shirt out of the way. 
or just make sure you start wearing shorts like this and you don't even have to think about it. <laughs> okay, so the second thing to think about is your pants. You notice I'm wearing mine kind of funny, right? So for people who are mostly sitting, I see two basic groups. I see people who are rather particular about this is, this is how pants are normally worn, right? So I see two groups of people. I see people that are often dressed by somebody else and they just put them on in the way that it's supposed to go and they throw them in a chair. And that the person in the chair, you know, you can't really feel, well, I can't even demonstrate that, you can't feel uh, what your body might or might not like about it. It's been used to this. This has been happening for a long, long time, right? So, um, but, it is pulling on you. It is pulling on you in ways that are hard to demonstrate when you're sitting in a chair. So let me let me do it standing up first, and then we'll do a chair version. So what's wrong with what's wrong with our pants? What's going on here? The problem with pants is that we do not bend at our waist, right? I mean, if if you can stand at all, right? Try it. Stand up. Try to bend at your waist. Okay, it's not not really even possible okay if I bend I bend here at my hips it doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl okay this is where the human body bends at not up here so if we take whatever we're wearing on the bottom half of our body and we anchor it to the top half of our motion because your body on top is supposed to be able to do the opposite of your body on the bottom right if you take your pants and attach them to the motion of your top, it creates endless problems, okay? People have only been wearing pants that you consider normal for about 200 years. <laughs> so it's long enough that we don't understand that it's a problem, you know, we're used to it, totally used to it. But stop and think about how long people have been around, okay? This is insane. This is not something people did for good reason. It just, it violates nature. <laughs> it doesn't let you move. The oldest pants we have, I think it's from like 1000 BC. They're hip pants. They do not go up to your waist. So as I got distracted from saying earlier, what I see with people in chairs is two groups of people. People that just don't give a rip. You know, they just get dressed like this and it could be, it could have a big old buckle here. They could be seriously overweight and they just don't notice anything. They just allow themselves to be dressed and they're there and that's just all there is to it. They don't think about it. Then there's other people who are rather particular. Like maybe if you're a little bit more mobile, you know that if you wear the wrong kinds of pants, it's harder to move. You can actually feel that. You might've already realized that you like hip pants, you know, because if, if you anchor your pants to the bottom half of your body, now I can do whatever I want and it doesn't pull, okay? That's like a 80% reduction that as a walking person, I can feel that my pants are no longer pulling on my knees. It's no longer pulling my back out, which is what happens, you know, if it's pulling on your knees and throwing your back out, just because it's anchored at your waist, like that causes a lot of problems. So that you don't have to worry about, of course, you know, if you're sitting mostly in a chair, you don't have to worry about walking around. That is absolutely true. But you do still have to worry about the exact same problem because it's happening when you sit too. If I take my pants and I put them up like this and I sit down. Now, I'm sure everybody watching this video realizes if you're going to sit down, then you need to pull your knees up. Otherwise, it's very, very hard, right? Okay, okay. Think of who's in the video here. You guys are moving more slowly. So that's a little difficult too, isn't it? If I need to put my arms down to let myself lower into the chair because it's hard to move. Try to remember what it's like when I broke my back here again, right? Then how am I going to grab my knees? Okay? This is something healthy people do, isn't it? So most of the sick people are just stuck. They're literally stuck in their clothing. So it's pulling in the maximum wrong way. So if I just sit down the normal way, definitely pulling. I mean, I can actually feel my kneecap shifting right now, right? <laughs> and it's also affecting how, wow, this is kind of hard to describe. How do you say this? 
I can feel a difference. If I just move around, if I just do the kinds of motions that I can do in a chair, right? I, every single time I move, every tiny little bit that I move is moving my kneecaps, all of it. And if you're messing with your knees, you are messing with your back. I can actually feel it right here. Now, I realize that if you're in a chair, you're not as sensitive as me, okay? I've learned how to, I've broken my back a couple of times, so I feel it when things are off, right? But I can move around more. So I, I actually notice these things in a way that you are unable to feel. And that's what I feel. I feel my knees moving and I feel stress in my tailbone, which is, you know, kind of the axis of your motion here at your hip line, right? I feel that very significantly. If I pull my knees up, if I can actually grab my pants and, you know, maybe the thing to do is something like this. You can take your pants and fold them up, just like knickers used to be built for this very reason, right? Now, now I can take all the time in the world getting into a chair and it is not going to be an issue, right? And then once I'm sitting here, then I can put my pants down because it really does make a whopping difference. You know, if your clothing is pulling on you, you know, if you weren't wheelchair bound, right? You go to the exercise section in the store. I think I used this example in the introduction already. You know, you find one and two pound weights, right? One and two pounds. And that's a serious workout. Well, maybe you work out because you're stuck in a chair and at least you want to work out your arms, right? Yeah, think about it. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit makes a whopping difference. If your clothing is always pulling on you all of the time, it does not matter whether you feel it or not. Your body definitely does. And it is responding by getting you to slouch more and more and more. The more you do, the more pain you are in. So, what's the thing to do? Um, if you are stuck in a chair, maybe, you know, if you're a kid watching this video, make sure you have your grown-ups or caregivers watch this video with you because they need to work with you to help pick up your clothing and things like your shoes and clothing, right? And you need their help for this kind of stuff. Uh, they need to understand what's going on in order to be able to help you with it. Um, if it's just you, you know, if you're chair bound, odds are you already own a lot of pants with elastic waists. You probably don't have stuff with buckles. Um, if you're one of the people that does, that you know, other people dress you, you just don't care. That's what they put on you. This is a big deal, okay? Have them watch this video. Stop to think about it and try it. Try a different style of clothing. Because as long as you get something that doesn't have a button right here, you'll be able to fold it over, right? And if you can fold it over, then you can fix your motion problems because you are gonna have two kinds of motion problems with pants. You're gonna have the knee problem, so you can do this, right? And you're also going to have this waist problem that's absolutely making a difference, even if this is as far as you ever move. Well, obviously, you're not going to lean backwards in a chair, right? But even if this is as far as you ever go, this is absolutely making a difference, you know? Um, you want to stop having your clothing pulling. So the last thing to look at then is your shoes. And again, it's like if you're sitting down all the time, you wouldn't think that this really matters, right? Wrong. <laughs> so let's let's try a little experiment here. See if you can get some kind of a board, right? Pull up your chair. Or if you're already in your chair, you might have to get somebody else to position the board under your feet for you. Okay, so if you just put the board, how well can you see that? Uh, uh, can you see that a little better? I just back the board up to the legs of the chair, right? That should work pretty well. Okay. Okay, so the first thing to do, if you if you have any mobility at all, do the sitting thing again. Um, get your, by all means, get your pants out of the way for this. We're trying to mess with our feet right now. We don't want to have pants to worry about, right? <laughs> okay, so if I... Okay, again, try to stand in the new way that you've been playing with. Try to correct your posture as much as you can. Not so much it causes pain, but, you know, stand up, 
straight as much as you can. You know, put your heels under your knees, under your hips, stack everything up nice and square, shoulders are back, right? Okay. So, let's watch what happens. If we have good posture and we slowly sit, Fabulous. Okay, now sit there for a few seconds so that you can really, you know, it's a good idea to do this with your eyes closed so that you're really listening to your body, right? Now just take your feet and put them up on that board. Feel the difference. Can you feel it? I mean, it's whopping for me. That's why I, I seriously, my neck just had a sore spot. It went all the way up through my neck. Okay, this whole part of my back right now was like instantly sore just from doing nothing more than lifting my heel half of an inch. <laughs> okay, don't use a two by four or something, make it a thinner piece, right? Some people are going to notice a difference with, with, with a quarter of an inch, right? Like this is a big deal. Doesn't matter if you're sitting or not. If your shoes have a heel, they are doing damage. Now, there's some of you, so again, we're going to have two opposite groups here. Some of the people um, are going to be just whatever. It's like, okay, so I just, we'll just stop using heels, right? That's probably actually, if you've been wearing heels a long time and you just didn't care and didn't think about it, you don't want to just chop your heel off because it's going to be very painful. This is just like you know, you watch the slouching videos, right? So if you always have to put a pillow under your head or you can't sleep, the same thing is going to happen with your feet. If you've been wearing heels for a long time, then, and that's just normal, you're always wearing shoes that have some kind of a heel, you can't just take the heels off or it's going to be too much too fast. It's going to be painful. The trick is to start taking it off a tiny bit at a time. Um, you guys don't even... For the other two groups, I had to give them a big old lecture about what's wrong with the shoe industry and all this sort of stuff. For you guys, it doesn't even matter because you need the heel, okay? If you are sitting down all the time, I'm pretty sure you probably have a heel problem. Most people are not aware that it's an issue, especially when they're seated, and it really is. So if you're the kind of person that doesn't get around very much and it's always something your body's used to, whether you know it or not, this is going to be a problem. So you don't have any choice but to modify what you have. And uh, again, you know, if, if you have a caregiver that maybe needs to watch this with you, um, you want to get a few different lengths of board to test you on. Like you get one that's a half an inch and one that's a quarter of an inch. If you can find one that's an eighth inch, that would be great. Get a couple of different thicknesses of board so that you can find out how much you can start taking that down by, you know? Um, ideally, like if you're stuck in a chair, the smart thing to do is just to get rid of your shoes and use a board, okay? You can cut it down to the size of your chair, you make it exactly the right height, and you go barefoot. And that way you can keep, um, you can keep support there for when it's needed, but it's a lot easier to change out a board for a different thickness when you're ready to go a little bit thinner again than it is to keep fixing a pair of shoes, right? <laughs> so if you're in a chair, I would strongly recommend, uh, this is way too much to start with if you're used to heels. If you're used to heels, you wanna start with something that's like a quarter of an inch thick. Um, that's it, just a quarter of an inch. Oh, sorry, I said that badly. Okay, you need to find out what thickness of board you're comfortable at. It might even be taller than a half an inch, right? But find out whatever you're comfortable at and then get one size down that's a quarter of an inch less than whatever you are comfortable with. You see what I'm saying now? Right, like you, you don't wanna take it all away, but um, if you start easing off in the direction that actually makes your body feel better, your body's gonna say thank you. Instead of screaming about the fact that you've changed what it's gotten used to, it's going to say thank you. So that's the secret, is to find how much to take that size down. So this is definitely easier for people who are completely stuck in a chair. 
Um, if you can move around still and it's just hard to move, you're going to have to modify your shoes. Um, if you're in the situation where you have to modify your shoes, I wouldn't bother with all the experimenting of exact heights. It's not going to be quite as important as it is for somebody who's completely chair bound. And it, it doesn't really matter because there's not much smaller than a quarter inch that you're going to be able to get off with a good knife. <laughs> so again, if you're a kid, again, this is something that grownups are going to have to help you with, right? You want to make sure that wherever you are at, you take just a little bit off and that it stays even, right? I mean, if your body's having problems because this heel here is throwing everything off in this direction, well, if you cut your heel unevenly, well, now it can be crooked in this direction too, right? You don't want to just trade one kind of problem for another. It is important that you actually get your heel fairly level, right? So you're going to have to use a marker and mark it all the way around and try to cut it as evenly as possible. It is going to be easier than you thought because, you know, the, when they make shoes, they try to conserve materials, right? So you're not... You're very unlikely to find a shoe that actually has a solid heel. It would actually be pretty hard to cut through without some kind of an automated tool, right? Um, of course, if you can, that would be a handy way to cheat. If you know somebody who's got a nice saw, that they could actually cut off a measured amount off your heel, that would be fabulous. But if you can't, don't sweat it because it's not nearly as hard as you think. It takes me about a half an hour to modify a pair of shoes. I just want to take off a quarter inch. Just a, you know, just a thin little sliver to start stepping it back in a way that your body will definitely appreciate, right? Um, if you just keep slouching more and more and more, it might seem like it doesn't make sense because you're, you're, you seem to be more comfortable with more of a slouch, not less, right? But <clears throat> again, there's the question of how much of what your body is saying are you actually aware of? You know, your body knows that great posture feels the best. And if you give it an opportunity to start shifting back in that direction, instead of saying, no, 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 I can't because it hurts, right? You don't, you don't say no, you say just a little bit so that it doesn't hurt. Your body will absolutely, you might not notice any difference at all. Be like, what was the point of all this? This is a lot of hard work and I don't even feel a difference. Give it a couple of weeks. you go. So that's about it. Um, you know, just like anybody, just like anybody running around, doesn't matter whether you're sitting or not, your clothing is pulling on you all the time. So if you don't allow clothing that lets you move in the way that nature decides was what feels good, you're gonna have problems with it, big, big problems with it. It's really kind of cool that something, I mean, this is no extra exercises, right? This isn't any kind of extra work. It's just a little tweak to something you already have that in the longer term is absolutely going to help you feel noticeably different. Um, it might take a little longer for somebody in a chair to really notice a big improvement, but that could easily swing wildly in either direction. You know, like if you're really, really, really desensitized, it's kind of like cleaning out your liver. You know, you might go through two shoe size changes before you even notice anything. <laughs> But as your body starts to be able to, as you start to become aware of what your body is saying, more it's going to change. And you'll start noticing it and feeling it, even if it takes a while to get off the ground. So that's it. Um, I think that should have you covered. Again, none of this stuff costs any money. It just takes a little bit of effort to modify. And we're good to go. Good luck. Namaste.